All right, we're back for a little bit more media exploration. Today, we're on video two, working in ink. And by ink, for us, I mean Sharpie. Everybody loves a good Sharpie. However, these processes will also work for um, if you have gel pens or any really nice drawing pens or just any kind of ink pen. Um, a lot of times you don't like working in pencil, you might prefer working in ink. So let's talk about how we can get some good details in ink, similar to what we can do in pencil. Um, all right, so we're going to start on a fresh page, and this probably won't take the whole page. We're just going to try three different methods. So I'm going to create, I'm going to take one of my Sharpies here, I'm going to create three rows. One, two, and three. And you have a little bit of extra space down there if you want to jazz it up with your own drawings. So these three processes we're going to use are hatching, cross hatching, and stippling. Okay, so with Sharpie, I'm going to use um, both the um, the ultra fine point Sharpie and a regular fine point Sharpie. Um, but you could use any ink pens um, or tools that you might have. So if you want to do this with gel pens, if you want to do this with um, different kinds of Sharpies, they don't have to necessarily, necessarily be black. Um, but this is just ways that you can create some interesting surfaces using ink. So instead of shading, what you would often do is you're going to use line proximity and line quantity and line layering to create darks and lights. So hatching means you are using lots of lines that go the same direction. I'm going to try to angle that a little bit so that you can see it. So if I wanted to create a shadow, I might use lots of lines that go in the same direction. If I want to make it darker, I might layer more lines to create areas of dark. If I want to make it lighter, I might go a little bit lighter and create areas of light. So the, basically, the more white paper you see, the lighter it is. The less white paper you see, the darker it is. Um, I can also use pressure. The more pressure I put on my lines, the heavier they are, and the lighter pressure I put the lighter in value they are. So what I'd like you to do is try out some hatching. Um, if you use a thicker material, it's going to go a lot faster. So if I'm hatching with an ultra fine point, there's a little less control with um, the fine point marker than the ultra fine print point marker, you'll see. But try using different line quality, different weight, and using different layering to create values. You'll see that I went over with some hatch marks in just one area to create a darker shadow. So this is ways that you could create shadows using um, your ink materials. Now just because um, just because you're using lines does not mean they have to be straight lines. So let's say I do have a circular object or like a circle and I want to hatch shade it. Um, what I would do is I would use curved lines to show the curved nature of my curved object. And I could curve those lines in a couple different directions. But this is called um, cross contour hatching, where you are using the contours or the, the lines, the shape that you're actually trying to shade. So the way the shape actually goes is how you're actually trying to shape put a couple little dash lines in there. Okay, so it can be curved um, contour lines as well. Cross hatching is just the same, um, except in two directions. So let's say I am trying to create um, some hatching. I might start with one direction, but then cross over that. Um, a lot of times you use hatching and cross hatching together and you just have cross hatching in some areas and hatching in other areas. But you can see this creates another level, kind of a new layer um, for creating different values. You can actually create more different, more variety of values with cross hatching because you have those different directions. So if I am 
trying to get something really dark and I cross hatch enough, I'm just going to have an area of black if I fill it in enough. Um, that is cross hatching to shade. Um, if I'm using a dark, a larger Sharpie, it's pretty much the same, but it goes a lot faster. Um, if I was using a larger Sharpie, I'd probably be one of, I would probably want to work on a larger scale drawing. Um, the finer the line is, um, the smaller you can work. Um, and likewise, if I'm working on a three-dimensional object, um, I kind of almost did a little cross-hatching in my first circle here because it's sort of natural for me to want to start cross-hatching. But I could start cross-hatching with lines that all curve. So this is an example of using curved cross-hatching. And sometimes it can be really super neat and tidy if you are somebody who likes very straight lines. And sometimes you can kind of get your have your lines be a little looser. You can even kind of go back and forth like this. Um, it doesn't have to be all individual lines. You could just have lines that go, that connect like that. That still would be considered hatching even if it's a little bit looser. So that is cross-hatching cross and hatching. And then stippling. This is something I do not do in class very often because it's annoyingly loud. If I have 30 kids, stippling, which is basically creating shaded areas by making clusters of dots. Um, and if I have 30 students doing this all at once, it creates a sort of pounding noise that we want to avoid. But this is essentially the same thing. You're making marks, and the closer and more layered they are, the darker it is. And the more spread out they are, the lighter it is. There are artists who create entire large-scale works just using this method. It 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 really uh, appeals to certain very meticulous personalities. Um, this may not be for you, but I want everyone to give it a shot. You could try it with a larger marker. It might go a little bit faster. Um, but try making some different, there's that bell again, try making some different um, forms and shapes. You can even try shading a circle there um, with some stippling and try having some different values. Have some areas of dark, and have some areas where you have some really nice light areas. Okay, so that's working with Sharpie, and I'm gonna make um, a little note, Sharpie. Always make sure you're noting what you are experimenting with. Oops, this is the, the problem with writing and talking. Sharpie. So I can tell I've got my thin Sharpie, I've got my thick Sharpie. Um, make sure that you have tried some hatching with both types of markers, with or at least with two different types of um, ink uh, pens and different thicknesses. Um, try some cross hatching and try some stippling in your notebook, and then we'll be back soon for some coloring pencils.